Welcome to Culloway, North Carolina, where the road to a Southern Conference Championship certainly comes to a fixation. And we knew coming in after Chattanooga was coming out of this game to see who goes to win the conference. You know, I think we were focused. Um, we were locked in and we were prepared. They're a very veteran team. They have 40 plus seniors. I've never even heard of that before, but. You've got two top 10 teams, the first time that's ever happened here at EJ Whitmire Stadium. Fellas, just like I said earlier today, there's no more talking to be done. Western Carolina and Furman, two longtime rivals in the conference, now colliding with a whole lot on the line. We're the better football team, we know that. This is a big day for the Southern Conference, but it's also consequential in the big time picture of the FCS. Let's play our game. As far as effort, as far as togetherness, as far as discipline, I want to see us show that we're a complete football team. Everybody got that? Yes, sir. Talk about the, the crowd here. They're hanging on the edge of their seats to see what happens and what kind of message Western Carolina will attempt to send. Don't be hesitant. Don't be shy about it. Be aggressive and go take it, you hear me? This is our house. We're a great football team. Let's go show everybody in the country about it. Go. And time for a top 10 matchup. A flip pass wide open and the first touchdown on the board. Fires this one on the money. It's Colombo. Furman wastes little time with an answer of their own to go back up a pair of score. And White reaches back at the last moment. Look what I found. Touchdown, Western Carolina. They bobble the snap, all sorts of discombobulation. Catamounts pick it up. Gonzalez fires, it's White again. Fires, and it is intercepted in the end zone. Doesn't have time for long, and he sacks. Huff will keep it, he's got an alleyway, and off he goes, and the Furman Paladins We'll climb to the top spot. It will be a celebratory ride home for the Paladins. Yeah, that game was tough. That game was tough. The Furman game was very important. Like, of course, we would love to come out with the win, but we we had mistakes. So, like, at the end of the day, we didn't deserve to win. We didn't play our best ball, and that's what you have to do to beat teams like Furman. Right now, I think they're ranked number two in the country. So, of course, they're a good team. We didn't take them lightly at all. I think the Furman game was big for us because we was kind of riding a high horse a little bit, five and one. Uh, a lot of people at the school haven't done that before like me, so it's kind of big for us being able to go back and see what we did wrong and just make adjustments and just try to get better for the next week. I'd say we got like displacement with ourselves, kind of getting like the big head of having this little streak haven't been taking practices serious as we should be or preparing for the games as we should be. That type of thing, then we you know we're dealing with injuries, but that's not an excuse. It's kind of adversity that everybody has to face. You know, everybody has injuries, but I feel like as a team, we kind of had that mentality, next man up, next person, gotta come and carry the team to a win as well, so. 
you know, Dez and Derek have been out for the last two games, but um, things are going to happen. Things aren't always going to be perfect. Th guys are going to go down, and the next guy's got to be ready to play. And uh, that's what we found. These guys were ready to roll. We um, They came in and had to fill in some big shoes. I know it was a readjustment for me, but I trust every single guy I'm out there with. Doing with injury, you never expect the injury. Um, happened first game, first quarter. Man, I was feeling pumped, the happiest I've been in a while because it was the first game of the season. Very excited, but unfortunately, right at the end of that first quarter, I got injured, hyperextended my knee, and tore both my ACL and meniscus fully. So that was just really unfortunate. I'm only doing motion stuff with my knee and no weight bearing yet. I just got cleared to use one crutch, so that's good. Within the next two weeks, I'll be able to walk um, just with the brace on, straight leg. So that's gonna be good. I got hurt earlier in my career. Actually, it blew my left shoulder out. So um, that was a lot worse than what I'm going through right now. Obviously, it's a little bit different because I haven't been with the team as long, but it's been cool. Um, all the guys at practice make me feel involved. They always kind of shout me out and trip me up, and I try to give it back as much as I possibly can. Um, I know I can't contribute that much on the field right now, but off the field, I try to you know help the quarterbacks, whether it be throwing motion or film, stuff like that. Um, going through the game plan still, still trying to mentally prepare like I'm playing the game, even though I really can't. So. Well, the week we played Chattanooga, uh, the first opening kickoff return, so many emotions was going through me and all the adrenaline, I didn't feel the injury. So when I went to uh, the sideline and sat down for a couple of seconds, I realized something was wrong with my neck and my spine. I have a bulging disc going through my spine. Then I uh, broke my top upper right rib, damaged some nerves in my neck, and I sprained my AC joint. At first, I, I didn't know what to do. I went up to the office to Coach Edwards and Coach Scales. I cried, I'm not gonna lie, I cried because I knew it was over with, but they was just telling me like everything happens for a reason, so I've been using that time to get closer with God and just using that, and now I'm fine. Like Nothing bothering me, I'm peaceful, so. So this is my prayer board I was talking about. Um, here's three main things I pray for, uh, is helping myself, my family, and learning how to love. I pray for my friends, just get closer to God. I said, Lord, Jesus, I ask you to heal, heal my heart and mind and bring me closer to you and bring my friends as well. I give my life to you. I believe God is the only one who makes things possible. I ask you to heal me spiritually and mentally to follow you uh, follow your plans and your promises, and I ask that as well for my friends. That's basically all it. I've really just started it, so I have to, uh, still have some more to do, but I designed this and everything, and I, I felt like when I first got injured, the devil basically had me because I was mad about myself. I was mad at myself. I was mad at other people. I was mad at God. I was mad at everybody. But then I just came home. My mom told me to get in the Word. I've recently been baptized and saved, so I got back in my word, and this is just everything that's been coming up in my mind to do, so that's what I've been doing. I'm going to the airport. This is mainly where I go for peace, really. I'm looking down at the university and the surrounding area, and read my Bible or listen to gospel music every now and then, or country sometimes. Yeah, I feel like even if, even if you ain't a believer or even if you ain't in the same place I'm in, it don't matter what you're doing like this. I feel like this would be a perfect place for anybody just to think and just get a lot of little, lot of ideas of what to do in life and what's life really about. And you see all these mountains and then you get a real perspective on life. And I look at it as like a place God blessed me to live. So a lot of people don't really like the mountains because there's nothing much to do, but I feel like it's one of the best places because you can't get really in trouble, and it's just beautiful. Not the whole world have mountains, so I'm just blessed to be up in here. Sometimes at night, we just sit right here and just look at the stars or the moon or just look at all the lights down there. See the football field lights on sometimes? Some, for some reason, I just never, I never left Cullowee because I always liked it. A lot of people are city people, but I'm not. I'm a country or a mountain dude, so I like staying in the mountains 
and just looking. Recovery process has been great. I've been in the training room two hours a day, every single day, trying to get back right, get back on the field with my guys, with my team. It's too easy, though. We're getting all this money. Thanks to the What name about coach? He gonna push us. Push it to the limit. Oh, I'm super excited to be back out there with my guys. Yeah, CJ! Oh, CJ. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. I love the game of football, so I, the passion I have for the game is just crazy. So just seeing my guys out there, I feel the passion of the game. So I gotta make sure I have the energy for them, feed it for them, if they, even if they don't got no energy. I feed it into them. My teammates keep me up high and make sure that I'm good. And I always gotta make sure that my teammates are good as well. All the way off, all the way off, baby. All the way off. Book! Oh! Go get that! So I don't really um, think about myself when I'm out there with my guys. I just cheer them on and make sure they do what they gotta do. He got you. Ooh, don't do it. Don't finish him. He finna finish him. He got, he got that in 10K. He got that in 10K. He just, he finished him on 10 Well, homecoming has been a long tradition here at Western Carolina University. It's a stable, so the history of it goes back many, many, many years. And it's just much more than football. For early on, it was probably just around football, but now it's around our homecoming parade, homecoming nobility. It's about our partnership with the town. So it's gotten a lot more than what it's been in the past. So again, starting about with around football, but it's now expanding to a great big weekend celebration. So the parade is a really a great example of a town-gown relationship with the town of Silva and Western Carolina University. On Friday afternoon before the uh, Saturday home football game, we'll have a parade. It starts around 6 o'clock. People will line up on both sides of Silva. It is awesome. We start at uh, Mark Watson Park. We go all the way down through Silva. The Pride of the Mountains Marching Band is there. We've got lots of floats from student organizations, departments on campus. It's really, really an exciting time. And that's when the community comes out. They get to actually see, you know, our, our university at its really, really best. And it's just a lot of fun. So this place is gonna transform, I can tell you on Friday, when you talk about alumni coming back. Uh, there won't be a parking space that you'll be able to get on a Saturday here. All the hotel rooms are all filled up. Alumni are coming back from all over. And it's really a great time for them to be able to connect, connect with their friends, connect maybe with some uh, faculty that they have here. Some of them themselves actually have students here, so they're alumni, they've got legacy, they've got their own children here. So it's just a really wonderful time to be able to celebrate, reconnecting with friends, and just looking at how the university has changed. Some of them, you know, they were here in the 80s and 90s, and now watching the new buildings that have come up, and all the exciting things that are going on. And of course, to watch Catamount football on Saturday.
You know, we have a great game day experience every time we line up here at home, but the homecoming is just a little bit special, right? You got all your alumni back and everybody's back. And Homecoming week, everybody's coming back. They graduated from here. Everybody's excited, especially when we're doing good, you know. It brings more people in. People are more excited to see us play. As good of a setting as you might find in all of college football as the road leads to E.J. Whitmire Stadium in Cullowee, North Carolina. Hey, I want you to let it loose, you hear me? Yes, sir. I want you to pull the trigger. I want you to play faster and more physical than you ever have in your life. You understand me? Yes, sir. Homecoming, great crowd, great weather. This one's going to be fun. And to the back of the end zone, flag comes in. Bursar on the board. Ball pops out. Western Carolina needed a play. Fade route outside, got his man, pitch, catch, touchdown. Gonzalez fires, end zone, Ballinger, caught him, touchdown. Middle intercepted, and Mercer will walk it into the end zone. Up the middle he goes, and there he goes, Woo to the end zone. Got ourselves in a hole we've dug. I love the way you continue to fight. You continue to fight. We can learn from that. We got to take care of some things. We got to get better at some things. But by God, can we go win three in a row? Yes, sir. Can we? Yes, sir. Appreciate you. I love you guys. Okay? I love you guys. Live on the edge. One time. One time.